go. Good evening, guys. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Right, happy Easter. Hopefully, everybody has had a good weekend. Um, we are going to get going right away with the uh, with our workout. So, what we're looking to do is uh, three different sections today. Okay, so we've got basically an upper body and core uh, section, a lower body and core section, and then we've actually got a stability section at the end. Each section is going to be ten minutes long. Uh, there's only going to be three exercises in each section. In fact, actually, the third section only has two exercises. Um, but before we do get going, we're going to get into our warm up. So we're going to start off with just a set of walkouts. So it's just going to be one minute of walkouts. And that is just going to be walking hands out into a pressing position, walk back up onto your feet. So off we go. So it's just walking out into that pressing position, push the hips up into the air, back into that standing position, and then back out into that next rep. So this is going to be our base position each time for the warm up. So I want you to walk out each time into that position, back up onto your feet, getting that stretch on the hamstrings. Back up, back down each time. So just keeping that steady pace. Don't worry about absolutely hammering it so far, because all we're looking to do is just get the blood flowing through the shoulders, through the hamstrings, through the back, just getting things moving just raising that core temperature getting us ready for what's coming so again don't panic too much but how many you get in you'd be glad to know anybody that did the session last week not as many press-ups that's not to say that there's no press-ups today so we're just going to build on that so for the next minute every walkout one press-up at the bottom Back up onto your feet. So we're just making it a little bit more challenging. Walk out, one press up, back up onto your feet. So he's staying, good. Just checking out the guys on Zoom. So just that, walk out, one press up. So we don't drop anything, we're gonna add something to it each time. And we're only gonna add two more things to it. So just that, walk out. One press up, back up, onto your feet, and back out. Anybody that's been watching the YouTube videos, I think I figured out what I did wrong last week, so the video should be the right way around this week. Not with me, on my side. Okay, so the next one what I want you to do, you're gonna do a walk out, one press up, and a wide mountain climber on each side. So just into that, back up onto the feet, and start again. So everything has the same three things. So walk out, one, press up, number two, mountain climber, number three. From there, back up onto the feet and start again. You won't squeeze in as many rounds in this one. Looking good. So you won't squeeze in as many rounds, just getting through it, starting to get the hips warmed up. We've got one more thing to add to it, which is going to be a rotation. So we're going to do that in the mountain climber position. So whenever I say change, you'll be adding in that rotation. Oh, I've got somebody waiting to come in. Oh no, something else. So you're going to go into a walkout. You're going to do the press up, but then you're going to have a wide mountain climber plus a rotation. So I step forward my left foot, and I'm going to lift my left hand into that rotation. Back down, step back, same thing on the other side. And it's that walk back up onto your feet. So it's that walk out, one press up, wide mount climber, and rotation on each side. So walk out, one press up, wide mount climber, plus the rotation. And back up onto the feet to start the maneuver again. 25 seconds. Then we'll have a little minute to recover. And then we start into our first circuit. Into our first circuit. So it's only going to be 10 minutes in the first circuit. Time. Okay, one minute to rest. Grab yourself a drink. So now is the point you need a drink. So our first circuit is going to be three exercises. So we're going to work on 10 hand release press-ups. Don't worry, I'll demo all these. We're going to do 10 hand release press-ups. Then you're going to do 10 sit-ups 
or 10 hollow body rocks. And then thirdly, you're gonna go into a plank or press up position until failure. When you hit failure, you will start the round again. Your goal is in that 10 minutes to just keep moving, get in um, as few rounds as possible. Cause obviously you want that plank to last as long as possible, but you keep moving. So your hand release press ups are going to be chest onto the floor, thumbs up, press back up. That's one rep. So chest onto the floor, thumbs up, one, two reps. You're gonna go for 10 each time. So just like reach out, pull back in. Reach out, pull back in. So 10 reps of that. Following your 10 reps, you are then straight into 10 sit-ups. Try to crack my head on the radiator. So full sit-up. Or if you want something that's a little bit more of a challenge, you can go for a hollow body rock. So you create a hollow body, so a dish shape. And it's that rock forward and back for 10. And then finally, you're coming into your press up position or your plank position until you hit failure. Until you hit failure. Okay guys, so I'm gonna get you started on that, but I'm gonna go through a few different uh, alternatives while the training session is going. So we're going in, three, two, one, off we go. So 10 minutes. So of course your easiest one guys for the knees, the easiest option is to go on the knees and still do your same hand release press ups. Every time, try and reach right out, thumbs up, hands are off the floor. As soon as you've done 10, you can then move on. You've also got the option obviously to move, make things harder. So if you wanted, you could do wide press ups. When you still do your hand release, you can do diamond press ups, but you'll find that a little bit harder to get your hands in and out. So hands closer together, release, come back up. So any variation on press ups is acceptable. You can do whatever ones you want out of those. So as soon as you've done 10, no need to wait straight away into those 10 sit-ups or I prefer the hollow body rock. So create a bit of space, it's that rock forward and back. So my body shape doesn't change a huge amount. 10 reps, just trying to hold that solid position. And as soon as we've done that, I'm into that plank position. So the plank, elbows and toes. Don't let your hips sag down. Don't put that pressure on your lower back. Try and keep hips up, back stays flat. You're pulling in through the belly button. Creating that tension through the core. So it should feel like a corset that comes from the top of your ribs, or sorry, rather from the bottom of your ribs to the top of your hips and wraps around through the core. So it feels like a corset that pulls tight. Now as soon as you feel that your quality starts to drop, so if you started in a really solid um, plank position and you're doing this and hanging on where your hips have dropped to there, just start the next round. I'd rather see good quality and you do an extra round, okay? If you feel, you just start again, it's 10 minutes. Okay, you're already two minutes, 15-ish seconds in. So you've got less than eight minutes left to go. So again, working your way through, working your way through. Because this is my second time doing it today, Okay, or well, second class today, not second, not this workout. Uh, what we're going to do is straight back in. I'm going to stick with my knees on this one. So just 10 reps. I'm just keeping that moving. Where you need to. You take a break, okay? If you absolutely are goosed, you stop, you take a break, you shake out the arms. The goal is to keep moving as much as you can, as much as you can. As long as you're pushing yourself, okay? Pushing yourself doesn't mean being dead on the floor, it just means doing more than you think you're capable of. So if you are doing that and you absolutely need a break, take a break where it's needed. Sit-ups again, even within the sit-ups you have variations available to you. So you could come in too, arms across the chest. If you find that they're a little bit too difficult because you can't get that momentum, use 
arms tilt good so touch the ground throw the arms forward give yourself a little bit of momentum a slight cheat on the way up each time you find they're too easy straighten the legs out try and keep the legs fully straight and work through so you're trying to come into different variations you can do you can add in little bits and pieces here so challenge yourself however you see fit so you could come into a setup each time where you come in clap behind each leg five on each leg each time you can do all those variations you can come into a full setup if you need to guys okay if you've got some sturdy furniture or sturdy um wall fixings something that's not going to fall off on you you could do feet anchored any variation as long as we're working guys that's what i want to see as soon as you've done 10 you're then into that plank again trying to breathe so trying to look straight down at your thumbs so if you're back here it means your hips is up too high so it's looking straight down at your thumbs belly button pulled in towards your bum towards your towards your arsehole so trying to get trying to keep that contraction trying to keep that braced through the core as much as you can so we are five minutes in so halfway through guys halfway through so again same three exercises 10 10 failure 10 10 failures what you're looking to do whatever variation you go for so like i say my second class of the day so i'm skipping press ups on the toes and if you do two that's fine it just means you'll get in a few more rounds just a hand release reach out hands off the floor and thumbs up back up back down you'll get a full minute maybe a little bit longer to recover in the next round I promise you guys this is the only set of press ups you'll do today okay so after this 10 minutes is up press ups are done press ups are done so get as many rounds as you can so again even that hollow body has a few variations in it so if you want to um, make it a little bit easier contract yourself up almost into a little bit of a ball and you're there you're trying to keep that ball rocked up you want to make that a little bit more challenging start to extend that ball so you keep that curve through the spine but you stretch the feet out you stretch the arms out it makes it a little bit tougher on the core three and three quarter minutes remain three and three quarter minutes remain again as soon as you've done 10 reps whichever variation you want you come into plank or press up position this is the point where you want to try and keep your breath under control if you find yourself holding your breath you're probably making it a little bit harder than it needs to be but just keep holding yourself in that solid position try not to creep into that hips up so not down facing dog that turns everything off on the core you want to keep shoulders over the wrists as much as you can one thing i didn't account for with less hair i can feel the sweat gathering on top of my head a lot more than i did last week three minutes remaining three minutes remaining so again failure comes if you can now if you've done one round and you're doing a you know a nine and a half minute long plank brilliant that is amazing but if every failure you do another round another round another round so go straight into it like i say if you need that rest you take that rest but try your best to keep moving through especially when you've got two and a half minutes remaining you're three quarters of the way through the reason we're doing hand release this week guys you think about if you get yourself to the bottom of a rock or if you find yourself on the floor it's very unlikely that you've done a press up to get there what you may find you're on the floor and you've got to push off the floor from nothing faster and more efficiently you can do that the quicker you can be back in the game you can make yourself big back in the game two minutes remaining two minutes remaining so i've still got a couple of press ups left you guys can be counting where i'm at no idea what number i'm on but every time reach out thumbs up back in so as you're in those i'm going to go into setups this round so you can mix and match as well so i didn't say that before but you can mix and match so if you've been doing the hardest version of that hollow body and you feel like you're starting to struggle don't force yourself to keep going don't force yourself to keep going 
go to the easier version. Should still be a challenge, shouldn't be easy, just easier than it was before. If you're finding this dead easy the whole way through, you need to up that effort level. You need to work that little bit harder as you go through. One minute, 10 seconds to go. Minute and 10 seconds to go. So let's keep working. So that put me back into my press up position or my plank. So I'm trying to hold solid through the core and keep breathing. So I'm pulling my belly button in and down towards my bum. It should feel like I've notched the belt too tight. It shouldn't feel like I'm trying to go to the toilet. If anything, it should feel like I'm trying to prevent myself from going to the toilet. So I'm sucking in as opposed to pushing out on this one. This is looking good. 30 seconds remaining, 30 seconds remaining. So that's a failure that I've reached. So even though I won't complete a full round, I'm going straight into my next round of press ups. It's that reach overhead and that press. Looking good guys, keep moving. 15 seconds to go, 15 seconds to go. Five seconds left. Oh, I don't know if anybody heard that in the YouTube video, that's me catching my elbow off the radiator. Time, 10, or that's 10 minutes done. So we are now moving on to our upper body session, or sorry, what am I saying? Our lower body session, our lower body. So we've done upper body, we're done with press ups. Grab yourself a drink now if you need it. So again, the numbers are 10 for everything, unless you choose the option for failure at the end. So again, we have three options. We have three exercises. So what we're gonna go for is 10 leg raises. Uh, we're gonna go for 10 lunges on each leg. And then we've got either three quarter squats, which I'll demo in a second, or squat jumps. If you do squat jumps, it's 10 reps. If you do the three quarter squats, it's failure. I'll demo that what I mean in just a second. So leg raises, flat on your back, hands underneath your bum. If you need that little bit of lower back support, that's into up to 90 degrees, back down. Keeping the legs together. Just that, 90 degrees, leg raise. From there, you've got lunges. Now again, there's lots of options, but I'm just gonna quickly demo forward lunges. Just step forward, 10 lunges on each leg. 10 lunges on each leg. When we get into the workout, I'll actually go through a few different options for that. You, if you do squat jumps, it's 10 reps, so explode up for 10. If you go for three quarter, you're trying to keep the legs under tension, and it becomes squat all the way down, most of the way up, for as long as you can. As soon as you have to fully straighten the legs, that's the end, that's a failure, and you would start again. So, off we go. So we're going to leg raises first. Ready? Let's go. So 10 leg raises. You've got options. So again, you can go to 45 degrees. Try and keep your lower back tight against the floor. You can go to 90 degrees like I demoed before, or you can actually go slightly beyond where you lift the hips at the top of each rep, which adds to that difficulty. For all of those, keep your lower back tight against the floor for as long as you can. When we come to the lunges, so I demoed forward lunges, you've obviously then got reverse lunges where you step back, You've got split squats where you step, excuse me, where you step back, you keep your feet in place and you pulse on the spot. And you have also got lateral lunges. So you can do side to side as well. So stand on the one spot, step out to the side, get low and back in. Now I've only got room to do one way at a time. So what I'll do is I'll do all 10 that way. And once I've done that, step in, I'll do all 10 the other way. Yeah, so you're working between those two motions. Doesn't matter which you choose, you can go forward, you can go back. Because if you do the three quarters, just trying to keep the legs and bum under tension. So slow that right down. We're not looking for massive speed. We're trying to keep the thighs, the glutes under tension as much as you can. As soon as you feel you need a break, your legs need some oxygen, 
straighten the legs, start the round again. So you're working through again. We are already two minutes, well, almost two minutes in. Okay, so we're almost two minutes in. So again, those full leg raises with the hip raise, those 90 degree leg raises, or the 45 degree leg raises. Any one of those options for 10 reps. Nice job. So from 10 leg raises, I'm gonna go for those split squats. So that's straight down, straight back up for 10 on each side. Oops, it is it. So you notice I'm not actually pushing off my front leg. I can rest my hands there, but I don't want to push off. I don't want to brace off that front leg. So as soon as I've done 10, we swap straight over. You do 10 on the other side. Ten. So from there, you can either go into those 10 squat jumps, or if you're obviously indoors in a flat and you don't want to be jumping up and down with the neighbors downstairs, you can go into that full squat three quarters of the way up. Try and get in as many reps as you can. You should feel the thighs start to burn. They'll find it fairly tough. As soon as you feel you have to fully stand up to give your legs a rest, that's when you start again, okay? Three and a half minutes gone. So our last circuit, which I haven't described yet, is gonna be stability based. Now it's gonna be 10 minutes, but it's dead easy. I'm gonna go through our cool down as we do that circuit. Um, but there's only two exercises in it, and it's all about building up that hip and ankle and knee stability, but also shoulder stability as well. Now obviously I've got set reps that I'm gonna do in the last set. If you feel you want to spend a bit more time on say hip and knee ankle, that's fine, you do more of those. You want to do spend a bit more time on the shoulder, you spend more time doing the shoulder one. But we'll work through that in under six minutes time, about five and a half minutes time. But I'm back at the start, so I'm back into those leg raises. Keeping that lower back tight against the floor. I should remember when actually I write these that I have to do them myself. But I'm going to reverse lunge for this one, so stepping back. So I'm taking a strong stride back. Anybody eagle-eyed might find out that I can't talk and count at the same time. So if I have done eight or nine or 11 on each leg, you know, you can tell me off of that. And I can't do two things at once. So again, we're working our way through. I think this is 10. This round I'm gonna go into 10 squat jumps. Reverting that choice. That's another round complete. So we're down to about four minutes remaining, just over four minutes. So with those lunges, think about mixing up the variations that you do. So again, Think about what we have to do in rugby. If you get stopped at the gain line a lot, think about doing most of your lunges forward and back. If you tend to miss steps, you miss gaps, think about introducing a little bit of lateral movement. So it doesn't have to be directly to the side, it could be forward and sideways. It's just that step forward and back. So you're introducing different directions, working, different ways of working. So you get yourself strong in those movements, it'd be so much easier 
for you to try and evade players. It's no guarantee that you'll evade them, but you'll have the ability to try. If you can do that, brilliant. Me, I have no problem running into somebody, so I have to try and work on going round people. Probably not one of my strong suits. So I'm not doing those squat jumps again. This time I'm gonna come into a three-quarter squat. Trying to keep thighs under tension as much as I can. Ooh, legs aren't having it. Legs aren't having it. So again, a risk failure. But three or four reps in there. So I'm straight back into my leg raises. Lower back stays tight against the floor. Think about what you're trying to do with this. Not necessarily lifting the legs. It's about turning the hips towards your ribs. So it's not your hip flexors. Lift your leg there. It's that curl of the hips that brings it in that posterior pelvic tilt as you come in. So 10 reps of that. I think I've done five. I'm gonna throw in some Cossack squats. So again, that lateral movement. We're just in that wide stance. I'm gonna go for 10 on each side. So again, I'm shifting my weight from side to side, being able to move from side to side. 90 seconds remaining, minute and a half to go. So we're the stay at home Spartans at the minute. Hopefully, those of you that aren't key workers aren't going absolutely insane. Big thanks to those guys that are key workers, whether you're in shops or whether you're in ICU in the NHS delivering stuff. Well done, you guys. We really do appreciate it. This is good. 60 seconds remaining. Bound to be 20 by now. So again, I'm in those three quarter ones. You'd be glad to know the next one, guys, is dead easy. It's not about as many rounds as you can, it's about staying as balanced as you can. Oh God, what am I doing? I stood up, that was failure. I have to start again, 30 seconds to go. I'm 10 straight back into my lunges, got 10 seconds. I'm just gonna alternate legs, make sure I do even numbers on each leg. Five seconds. Let's keep working, squeeze out what you can. And time. That's two rounds complete. One round left to go. So grab yourselves a drink. This last one isn't about getting out of breath. It's about staying as balanced as stable as you can through each of these movements. So, I'll demo them first uh, and then we'll get into them. So what we've got is gonna be a press up position and you're gonna try and come into one handed rotations. So the trick is to keep your hand off the floor. So if you're confident, stick your hand across your chest. If you're really confident, pop it behind your back. If you're not confident, just keep it ready to hit the floor. Any one of those three. So I'll be in Press up position. I'm going to lift one hand off the floor. I'm going to try and rotate up, but then I'm also going to rotate back down, keeping my hand off the floor. So I've got that control through my core, through my shoulder. I'm just aiming for five of those on each side. So again, that rotation. Now, if you find that easy, what you can do is move your feet closer together. The closer your feet are, the more challenging that one will be. But it's trying to turn your body in relation to your shoulder, which is on the ground, which is, which is keeping you stable. That's your upper body mobilization. Your lower body one, I want you to go for 10 on each side. It's gonna be a single leg deadlift. So I want you to try and touch your shoelaces with both hands. So it's that fold over, touch, come back up, 
that's one rep and you're going to try and go for 10 on each side now if you struggle if you're falling all over the place after five reps just shorten the shorten the set go for five on each side this is about stability it's not about getting out of breath so 10 minutes again off we go so again focus on whichever one you want to focus on whether it's that press up one doesn't matter so again you come into that rotation up and rotation back down you control that movement both directions i'd say aim for five on each side if you tire out before five so be it if you think you, you are more prone to turning an ankle or pulling a hamstring spend a bit more time on the stiff legged deadlift so that's one leg one foot stretches out behind both hands touch the shoelaces or the ankle and come back up so you'll notice i'm not squatting i'm just keeping my leg ever so slightly bent as it comes through you'll see as well if you look carefully you probably don't have to look that carefully but you'll see that i'm wobbling that's a good thing my body adjusting and if you fall over obviously that's not what we want but try and allow your body to do the adjusting as much as it sees fit as soon as you've done 10 reps just swap over and do the same thing on the other side so you're trying to stay balanced the whole way through when you fall forward stretch that foot out behind good so while you guys are doing those two movements so the shoulder one and the single leg deadlift i'm going to quickly demo a hip mobilization which is a really nice one i've just discovered and um, from a guy in Macclesfield, if you want to follow him is 5s fitness really knows his stuff as well so what you're looking to do guys is a split squat so both feet are on the floor you'll reach hands up and back so you're stretching out hip flexor on this side as you come up reach forward straighten the front leg so you're getting the hamstring stretch on that side and you work between those two positions so it's hands back hip stretch hands forward hamstring stretch hip hamstring hip hamstring you want to make it more of a challenge keep the back leg off the floor so it becomes hip hamstring so same movement i'm just keeping my knee from touching the floor go for roughly 10 of those on each side it's a really nice stability one with that shoulder one every time we turn our chest down so i'm on the side turn my chest down my hand stays up so i've got to control everything through that right shoulder i'm not letting that left hand hit the floor i've got to control it through that side so as well as those guys while you're working you've also got just any of your own stretches any of the stretches we do regularly at training so you know you've got your tina turners your mountain climbers your flamingos all those things will be useful one of my favorites is just child's pose from there into upward facing dog so I drop my hips lift my chest up and I stretch back and I just work between those two so I get the stretch through the chest as I pull my shoulders back and down and then I create that stretch through my lower back as I push my hips back and it gives me a bit of space a bit of time to get breathing under control as I work through the two of those now because this is stability based we're not worried about getting it perfect we're not worried about it getting in millions and millions of rounds if you're able to do loads of rounds with no problem probably means you're quite stable so you need to look at different ways to make it more challenging so for instance if you were doing that single leg deadlift where you would stretch forward touch the shoelaces and come back up you would grab yourself some form of weight so i've just got this bottle to hand just forcing me to be a little bit more stable if i come down and get that bottle to my shoelaces come back up i could make it more challenging do it on one side then straight into the other side so i have to adjust my weight adjust where i'm shifted if you've got dumbbells if you've got kettlebells if you've got you know 
you've been out for to do the weekly shop you've still got some of the shopping in a bag you could do it that way but we're working through those for anybody that has really really tight shoulders so ideally what we should be able to do with our shoulders ideal world is to try and get your shoulders up and they should be behind your ears now through various injuries you know i know some people have had broken collarbones and um, they have had you know dislocated shoulders and different um work related problems where they sat over a computer all day long it means that we end up with tightness in the shoulder so if you can't get to there if you can only get to there and then to get your hands higher you have to arch your back what you can do is come into wall slides or floor slides i prefer them on the floor because gravity helps you out but you can do it on a bare patch of wall as well so you would lie back hands try and get your arms your knuckles your wrist and your forearm all against the wall and you'll stretch overhead and back down what you want to keep in touch with the wall is the back of your head your shoulders and your hips as well so you'll try and keep them in contact with the wall so i'm going to demo it as a floor version but it's the same exercise so you'll lie onto the floor create that cactus shape and it's that stretch overhead and arms back in now if you can't get your arms down you would do the same movement just trying just aiming to push those arms down just that little stretch through it these are really nice mobilizations i find to throw in on training days and if you're in if you've got your know, home gym equipment and you're doing like a leg day focusing on upper body mobility can be really good same as the same as the other way around if you're doing you know upper body day you're doing like bench press or you're doing pull-ups or rows or whatever you're happening to do throw in some lower body mobility during your rest periods so you get a little bit more of an efficient workout so from there guys okay that is it's actually it's seven minutes but in terms of stability if you haven't got enough done just carry on don't stop here but it, um otherwise guys that is us done for today so thanks for joining in um, as always guys get some comments onto the YouTube video um, or into the uh, into the Spartans group if you're not comfortable telling me you know tell your tell your team captain whether it's touch uh, second team first team social players you know you, you, anything you want to work on guys get a message to me I can try and put it into these sessions but for now guys really really well done we'll see you again on Wednesday evening um, uh, for more of the same well done tonight great job guys